there, welcome back. In this entire chapter, we're gonna be going over differential equations. They sound gnarly, but you've actually solved some of them before. They've been involved in some of your directions, and what I'm gonna convince you of in this video is they're not as bad as they sound, and you can rock them. So we'll devote this entire chapter to solving them, talking about slope fields, talking about real world problems that involve differential equations. So without any further ado, let's see how we've actually studied them in the past. So this says, solve for the particular solution y equals f of x to the following differential equation with the initial condition f of 2 equals 4. So here's the thing. We know that solving a differential equation means to get the function that came before it, right? Solve for y as a function of x. So how do we do that? Well, we anti-differentiate both sides of that equation with respect to x. So we've done that before. You haven't quite done it with this notation, possibly. And I'll go over down the road something called separation of variables. So we'll talk about how that's a method that we use to solve these things. For now, just integrating with respect to x on both sides, um, or just really integrating or anti-differentiating. The antiderivative of dy dx is y, right? The function that comes before the derivative of y is y. Now that's equal to, this will be x cubed dx, so this will be x to the fourth over 4 plus c. Just normal anti-differentiation, nothing new there, right? Totally handleable, if that's a word. And now we're going to solve for c, given the fact that f of 2 equals 4. So the y value is 4 when x is equal to 2. So you get 2 to the fourth all over 4 plus c. And when we solve for c, let's do that. We get 4 is equal to 2 to the fourth is 16 over 4. So 16 over 4 is 4. Well, that's, that's nice. Whoever made this problem, this guy. Made it pretty nice, because c is equal to 0. So our particular solution is x to the 4th over 4. You have solved many a problem like this before. And what does our solution represent graphically? Well, it's the graph of x to the 4th over 4, which is, again, this is just a very, very, very rough sketch, but something that goes up like this, like a rough, rough sketch. Almost like a parabola, but a little bit steeper than that. The plus c there, if we didn't have the particular solution, would represent infinitely many of these parabola-like things shifted up and down. All right, and we've seen stuff like that before, so not bad. Solution to a differential equation you can handle. So what are differential equations and why do we need them? So a differential equation in general is any equation that involves differentials, typically derivatives. So we saw in this last equation right here, you had the differential dy and dx, and it's an equation. Therefore, it's a differential equation. Not so bad. So why do we need these equations? Well, in the real world, we use them to describe things that change. That could be populations that grow or decay, prices that go up or down, physical laws, right? Actual things that talk about acceleration, velocity, position, anything that has rate of change or rates of rates of change or beyond involves a differential equation. So I give you an example here. It's a very famous Newton's second law of motion, uh, which says force equals mass times acceleration. And you might be like, how, how is FMA, if you were to say it literally, how is that a differential equation? Well, force and mass are not differentials, but acceleration is. So acceleration is actually the second derivative of position. So let's say that position, let's just let that equal to x of t, just a random function then this would be equal to d2x dt squared, a really fancy way of saying x double prime of t, making this a differential equation. That acceleration being the second derivative makes this an equation with a differential. Pretty sweet. Sweet indeed. All right, and to look a little bit further, think back to your studies with related rates. Right? When we took the derivative of, let's say, a circle area function, right, area of a circle, with respect to t, you would get da dt, or da data, as I want to say, equals pi times 2r, don't forget about the chain rule, times dr dt. So this is going way back. If you're not remembering that, go back to chapter 2. It's good stuff. So this is a differential equation, and you handled it before. So what's going to actually happen now is you're going to be given an equation like this, and you're going to be asked to go backwards. So it's like you're going to be given a velocity and go back to position, an acceleration and go back to a velocity and go back to position. We've done a lot of that before. We're essentially being given a function with derivatives in it, and we want to undo that. That's pretty cool, right? So last but not least, 
your basic velocity equations, we've seen that before, right? If position is x of t, then velocity is x prime of t, which is v of t, and that's equal to 2t minus 5. This would be a differential equation. Again, you've got a derivative in an equation. Our goal? To go backwards and solve back to the original equation and not have any more differentials in it. That's our goal. So what we're going to do in later videos, actually in the very next video, is I'm going to show you just what solutions of differential equations look like, just verifying solutions. Some teachers test you on that, others not so much, but for now, I hope that you now see that differential equations are things you've seen before and they're not so bad. Let's get exploring. Can't wait to see you in the next video. Until then, as always, peace.